Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back your lovely faces to a brand new video here on the channel. Now it's been a you know a couple of days since we've actually covered anything regarding the Dan Wooden situation. Last time obviously we were looking at a small independent media outlet that was shut down because of legal threats. But then we also saw about The Guardian, The Daily Mirror, The Daily Star, all these other actual news outlets all take their actual articles down regarding Wooten. So today we're going to look at the Byland Times article where it's from someone called Lexi Kirkconnell Kawana and she's actually the CEO of Impress. Impress is the Independent Monitor for the Press. It's an independent press regulator in the UK. It was the first to be recognised by the Press Recognition Panel and like the Independent Press Standards Organisation, the IPSO, Impress is fully compliant with the recommendations of the Levson Inquiry. Impress regulates over 200 titles, consisting of a variety of independent local, investigative and special interest news publications across the UK. So with that there, we got someone now who is writing this article, this Lexi woman, and it's interesting because obviously, as we saw by here, disappearing Dan Wooden articles show a serious need for an S40 alternative. Major publishers removed articles about a meta police investigation into the presenter after receiving legal threats following the Byland Times special investigation. The CEO of press regulator Impress sets out what could be done to prevent such a situation. So it's actually a really good article because they go on, or say Lexi uh, writes, everything that these people are doing and the way that Dan Wooten is bringing the slap against people, it's, it's like, right, you shouldn't be doing this. And it is because of this new law and everything else. And obviously we saw with the Bloomberg one 2022, which is what his lawyer has been sending people on Twitter and other news organizations. We're going to do this to you because of this. And it's like, actually, no. So the influence of the rich and powerful over what can and cannot be published in the UK is longstanding and often rooted in a broken system, but is not an unfixable problem. Last week, The Guardian, The Mirror, Various other reach websites and the National in Scotland are this removed stories after a legal warning made by a lawyer acting for suspended GB news presenter and former Mail Online columnist Dan Wooten following the Boiling Times investigation. In response, a spokesperson for the Guardian Media Group told Press Gazette following a review the article has been taken down. Basically, that means, yeah, we uh, we got scared. Yeah, they threatened to sue us, so we're not doing it. You know, it's like, but you're the Guardian, that's one man. That's Dan Wooten. You're the Guardian. The basis for such legal threat is often along the lines of the police investigation triggers a right to privacy. With the 2022 decision of the Bloomberg LP, where the Supreme Court found pre-charged suspects have a reasonable expectation of privacy. To be honest with you with that, though, I think that's bullshit. Because if you're in the public eye, and people are going to find out that you are being investigated. Okay. Now, obviously, regarding the uh, reporting of such things, like if new evidence come out, yeah, you can't report that. Give it to the police. Send everything you have to them. But the public need to know. This is what really grinds my gears over this entire situation, is that with all these people, what they find... Ooh, this needs to be public interest. Oh, this is public interest. Oh, that is public interest. The public need to know. We need to get this out there. Okay, then. But when it's against people who, like Wooten, who obviously has something on quite a few number of high-powered people, they're too scared to do it themselves. Which, to me, shows that those kind of people should not be in power. Because if they're scared of this, what else are they scared of? You know? But it does go on. Coincidentally, this seems to be the basis for guidance issued by the Attorney General following the reporting on the Russell Brand allegations, something Impress has recently moved to clarify in a letter to Victoria Prentice KC. While an awkward teething phase can follow new legal precedents, which limits press freedom, in this instance, any reasonable expectation of privacy Wooten, who denies criminality but has never denied being or being connected to false online personas, may hope to enjoy pre-charge is not absolute and can be eclipsed by another powerful legal position, the public interest, which is what I just talked to you about. The public interest is a fluid concept, 
ultimately decided by judges and regulators, but offers a broad protection to journalists and editors where it is interpreted in good faith. His latest retraction of news, coverage across high-profile archives, reveals either that these news providers were not persuaded that there was a strong public interest defence in the Wooten reporting, although seemingly strong enough to publish in the first place, or that the legal threat was sufficiently chilling that they caved and removed the stories. Now, with that part by there, obviously, with uh, Lexi saying that, oh, there's not a strong public interest in this, but it was strong enough for them to actually publish it at the start. The Guardian's article was up, I believe, for about three hours. The Daily Mirror was up for about five. And then all of a sudden, everyone started taking them down. The Lad Bible and Yahoo News, they were up a little bit longer. They were up for about 24, 25 hours each, but then they got taken down. I think at the start, everything who was under the Reach website uh, who runs them, which is nearly every single newspaper, you go on The Sun, Daily Mirror, Wales Online, The Guardian, it comes up with Reach and everything else if you want to do their uh, cookies and shit. But with all of that, they probably sent one to oh, Evan, we got to get it down, we can't have this. That's probably what happened. And they were probably too chicken enough to actually do it. Without a doubt, legal threats can present an existential challenge to news publishers. Litigation costs are, on average, £750,000, and most legal cases now take years to be resolved through the courts. That's a lot of money as well, three quarters of a million pound. But again, though, when you are the Guardian, the Daily Mirror, the Daily Star, all this, and you are raking in the money, that's, that's a drop in the ocean to them. Even if an editorial team stands behind an investigation, the spectre of litigation can collapse a news business, even more so now because of the fragile post-digital news business model. However, this is not a new phenomenon, and sadly, legal threats from powerful interests who do not want to be held to account by free and independent journalism are par for the course. In the absence of cohesive regulatory infrastructure and political leadership on press policy, a new allotment of research and inquiries, both at a national and international level, have been unleashed to find a remedy to this aged old problem. Early solutions have been left wanting, tinkering at the edges of civil court procedure, which presumes news publishers and claimants can first afford a day in court, even after passing through the costly pre-litigation labyrinth when the first legal writs arrive in the inbox. Frequently, however, they cannot, and it's at this point many bow out of the process before lawyers and their billables get involved. A real solution would address and weed out the roots of the problem. It would. You know, it's... So many things go on with this... And we've seen so many people have been, yo, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sue you because you can't say this. Well, I'm sorry, but if you got evidence and the actual police have come out and said, we are investigating this person, okay, you know, we got this. But then when they go, oh, they deserve privacy. No, they don't. For what they are doing, no. You know, it's interesting to see because, again, if you're in the public eye, you're a public figure, you're on a public platform, you know, Twitter, X or whatever, GB News, BBC, and all this kind of stuff, people will still report on it because it's news and it's a public interest. Again, the BBC is more public interest than GB News because obviously BBC is, is the uh, publicly funded uh, channel. Everyone, if they're in the public eye and they have a significant following, which again, if you've got a couple of hundred thousand followers or whatever, your class is in the public eye, especially if you make videos, or say here on YouTube, this, that, and the other, or even if you've got a TV show, which, you know, used to do really well ratings, and you used to appear on all these other talk shows, you're in the public eye. That's what it is. You're a public figure, public interest. People, including journalists, are not well-versed in the legal and ethical issues arising from publishing, particularly online. Zealous and vexatious litigants on both sides feel empowered to threaten and bluster because of a broken legal system, which it is. And three, the absence of political leaders with the courage to put forward bold press policy reform that supports free and independent journalism. Press policy is now an elephant graveyard. Most regard the only legal incentive left, the executive commencement of Section 40 of the Crime and Courts Act 2013 as dead on arrival. The Conservative Party, we in the UK is the uh, Tories. The party politicised it and after nine years of posturing has found a legislative vehicle to reappeal it. 
Meanwhile, Labour seems minded to oppose its repeal, although an official stance has yet to be taken. The legislation intended to reduce the burden on publishers, only allowing people to sue if a publisher rejected independent self-regulation and also gave ordinary people who couldn't possibly afford to sue a newspaper without the judicial discretion to make unregulated publishers pay for their costs, where judges thought it was fair to do so, access to justice. Now, Lexi does go in regarding what can we do. And some of the stuff here is like, you know what? It could work, but it may not. In the past 10 years, none of the bright minds of media policy or lobby has come up with a viable alternative proposition, and the situation has deteriorated to such an extent that it's needed a facelift in the form of a new acronym. A threat such as that from the Wooten camp is in the territory of the new trendy moniker, SLAPS, which we've gone over this because obviously the AH and Johnny Depp situation, where people were throwing this word around, and it's like, actually, you don't actually know what it means. And as you can see by the strategic lawsuits against public participation. As a regulator, we've triaged many such threats and separated the wheat from the chafe and only allow legitimate claims to go forward. We've been able to provide publishers and claimants with assurance that our processes will be fair and transparent and enabled many news publishers to stand their ground where they believe in the legitimacy of their journalism and, alternatively, provide efficient redress when they've got it wrong. The result? No publisher regulated by Impress has been successfully sued in the courts. A future in which publishers are protected by the threat of exorbitant and debilitating legal fees, and where the Wootons of the world must go through an independent body rather than targeting individual newsrooms, is not only possible, it's working in action. But it must continue to be fought for. If we want to see fewer arbitrary takedowns of legitimate journalism, we must build on systems of self-regulation already and underpinned by law, rather than being held back by the current policy, an approach that lacks the courage and vision of our news past and that our news future desperately needs. Now with that by there, I want to bring this part up by here. This is what I think everyone actually wants, where in the future, just not single individual media outlet are targeted, which is obviously what Wooten has done, because as I said, you had certain websites that were up on you for a matter of a couple of hours. Some of them were over a day, and some of them are still up as well, which is great to see. But obviously, the Bylan Times, they never, ever received any of the threats that all the other people have. Which that there goes to show that obviously with that, I do think Wooten and his team are like, yeah, if we do that to that, they'll probably publish what they got. Because again... If someone came to me and said, oh, I'm going to sue you because of this this story you've written about me, blah, blah, blah. And I, I'm like, I've handed the police all the stuff I've had. I would have made copies and guarantee you the Bylan Times have made copies. I'd be like, right, okay, then if you're going to sue me or whatever, and you're going to be uh, hands on, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I'm like, right, okay, then I'm going to just show everything. I'm going to show every single piece of evidence that I have against you. And that there, in my eyes, is why Wooten hasn't actually done anything to the Byland Times out of this time, as of this very moment. I think he is scared of them because he's like, if they've handed over 28 pages of evidence to the Metropolitan Police, and now those people are actively investigating me, they actually got evidence against me, which is damning. And I'd be like, well, I'm going to put it all on, on, on their line, Sodom. If you're going to threaten me, if you're going to try and sue me, you're going to be all of this towards me, I'm going to take you down. That's what I would do. And I'd probably end up being sued to oblivion because of it. But then, no, people in the public interest would have all the evidence. That's, you know, so I do think this, going forward, I do think this is going to work. But fingers crossed. Let me know what you think of this down below, folks. You know, it's, do we need a press regulator where who literally allows journalism to go out unfiltered and unedited? Or are we going to just allow people like Wooten and his higher-powered higher people, I should say, you know, just to throw their money around and, you know, they can report what they want, but when it's about them, they're not going to allow people to report on them? Yeah, I don't see that as fair. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, future updates, and I'll see you all soon.